Welcome to the pod bay door. This is the pod bay door. Join the crew every week for conversations on society, politics, and entertainment with a little bit of comedy and a whole lot of Las Vegas thrown in. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. We're glad you joined us. And if you get the chance, subscribe to us and give us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Also, check in with us on our YouTube channel at the Pod Bay Door Podcast. What is your favorite Las Vegas movie? Well, you know, I, 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 I guess it would be Leaving Las Vegas. I, I think because it, it gets away from the glitz. It really kind of shows, um, you know, it's, it, to me it was, it was quite realistic of what can happen. Right. Uh, most films about Las Vegas are about people who are, are transient and come here and they don't live here. Sure. And sure. that was a story of somebody who came and drowned here, you know, or came here deliberately to drown here. Yeah. You know, but that that's what can happen. I've seen people like that. I mean, those of us who live here, particularly in older neighborhoods, mm-hmm. um, I've seen, you know, I've known people like that. So. It, it's a very common decision, uh, oftentimes, because Las Vegas pulls you back in. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you the number of people that I am friends with, uh, acquaintances with, and um, they've left and come right back. Yeah. Yeah. You there's know. an undertow. Yeah, there is. You know, and it, and it will pull on, yeah. on, 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 on oftentimes a, a person's weakness yeah. if and you know i had a friend who's lived here a long time right. and before i moved here he says do you like to gamble well, no did you drink much no not really yeah. okay good then you're fine because if you like to do either one of them this place will, will will just you know it'll it'll suck you down it's particularly the gambling right because you know you can live a lot of places and not not be subject to it yeah. um and but then you come here and it's everywhere and it's all the time and you can bounce from place to place and you know, you can just, it will, it will grind you down. You know, it, it's more prevalent or, or less so for where uh, the positions we were in. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, because it's, uh, it, it's so, it is shallow. It's, it's this fatuous kind of situation that we're in. Um, and, and, uh, so I have no problem not going back. Uh, it was, it was kind of an, uh, it got to be an, an offensive situation because of the corporate environment. Yeah. Um, but the, mainly it's the dealers, uh, you know, it's the dealers, it's the slots, it's the, you know, in the gaming area. Um, and it's, uh, uh it's quite sad sometimes. Uh, but, um, uh, there are some people that just come back. They don't have problems. Uh, they just come back because it's easy money. And it's good money. I mean, you know, you're looking at tokes. Uh, you know, if you're beyond a break-in house and you're and you're pitching cards, you know, for real. Uh, I mean, you could make anywhere between a hundred to two hundred a day. Yeah. Uh, now that's a good place. That's a, that's you know, um, you know Caesars, for example, and all the major houses. They still make some you know pretty major money you know per day or per shift. It depends. Um, if people don't know, tokes are divided either. Uh, 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 individually, John will make whatever tips, and he gets to keep those. Or it's uh, day for day, or shift for shift, depending, and everybody shares, which gets to be a little strange because uh, you know you got the, you, you, it's a, a a bell curve, I think, of tips. You know, yeah, there's, yeah. there's one guy is killing it, and the other guy is just sleeping, in, you know, in the, in the yeah, and room. and it's going to depend on where you where you where you deal. Yeah, you know, I know that I think I'd mentioned on the podcast a while ago that you know I, I bought a I went to the library sale and I and I bought a book. Right. And inside the book, later on, I, I found somebody's uh, pay stub mm-hmm. from, uh, the, I think they worked at the Encore, uh, which is, you know, one of the wind hotels. Right. And they were a craft stealer. Right. And I looked at it, you know, oh, th- this person left their, you know, their, their, their pay stub and, and there wasn't, you know, it was just a, it was just a receipt. Uh, and I looked at it and said, oh, well, based on this, they probably make 80000 a year. Now, yeah. their, their, their base salary was minimum wage. It was like eight ninety five an hour or something like that. Right. But where they were making their money, of course, were the, were the tips. Now, the win is going to have a higher level of, of player than yes. you're going to find at the El Camo downtown or, <laughs> you know, or anything on Fremont Street or, or you know, some of the, right. the farther north you go on the Strip. But... Yeah. You know, if you work at a wind property, you have to be subject to harassment by Steve Wynn. That's true. <laughs> at least if you're a woman, right? <laughs> John and I were talking about um, 
and then the pre-show and and that of course Steve Wynn is uh has announced a development of a new property here in Las Vegas uh lots of news coming out about that and what's obviously you know to follow he sexual harass people and what's really funny is if you really talk to Las Vegas people like John and I do and and uh and have uh, all, all of us are like yeah Duh. That's old news, you know. <laughs> yeah, old as, news. As I had mentioned, uh, John L. Smith, who was a well-known, uh, he he had a TV show for a while, I think, locally on the news, okay. and uh, you know he's a columnist in the newspaper, and he had written a biographies back in the in the mid '90s, one about uh, uh, Bob Stupak, um, and another one about Steve Wynn, and mm. it was it was Steve Wynn's power since these were unauthorized. Yeah. Um, biographies, but they were they were well researched and 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 they weren't necessarily a hack job. I mean, you know, they they were they were pretty truthful, um, sure. you know. And and Wynn was able to put the publisher out of business, you know, yeah. bankrupt him by by just tying it up in the, the, this book in litigation. Right. Eventually, the book was published, and I do have a copy of it. And they talked about the sexual harassment and uh, with Steve Wynn being a sexual predator back then. And right. this was, like I said, the, uh, Smith's book came out, I'm going to say late nineties, 98, 99, might've been 2000. Okay. Um, but you know, probably not, we're talking that era. So it's been 20 years pretty much. Sure. sure. Uh, Bob Stupak. Yeah. Uh, of course with the stratosphere. Yeah. And, and what was it before stratosphere? Wasn't it this, one of the slippers, silver slipper? No, 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 no. Vegas, oh, Vegas world. world. That's yes, right. A I'm space sorry. Space themed. Yes. Right. Casino, which yes. was, uh, but he had a place downtown. Didn't he also have the silver slipper, the golden slipper? I believe so. He had an interest yeah, in it. But yeah, 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 Vegas World, which was Vegas World, that's right. wildly popular, as, yes. as, as of course, the stratosphere is now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Bob's dead, right? Bob's yeah, he died, died a couple of years died. ago. But we saw him at the opening of the Venetian. We I did, remember. Yes. Little re- tiny guy. Yeah, Little and tiny and, guy. and I re- what I remember was there were there were displays of you know bouquets of flowers and stuff, and right. there was this really gaudy, tacky, ugly. Flower display. I said, "Oh my God, who the hell brought that?" Yeah. And I got to go look at it. And I went up yeah. there, and it said, <laughs> "Shelley Mazeltov, Bob Stupak." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob. Um, uh, back to the movies. Uh, I'm a I, I'm a a solid uh, Soderbergh fan. Yeah, and yeah, so, I am too. So uh, you know, I I think about all the Vegas movies. You know, the Hangovers and the yeah. Uh, the leaving Las Vegas is and and I mean uh, practically every film and every Netflix Netflix presentation uh, either starts or ends up in Vegas somehow. Uh, but uh, I'm still a fan of the Ocean's Eleven. Yeah. Now yeah. is it practical? No, of course not. Um, uh, you know we've we've recently had some uh, some pretty high end robberies. I mean, Mr. Wynn, of course, he's had a bad couple of weeks. Yeah, he has. Uh, but uh, uh, with the with the robbery at his his yeah, place, Karma's but, a bitch. Yeah, isn't it? Well, he's and blind. He's yeah. blind now. So. Um, but uh, um, I, Ocean's Eleven, I, I, you know, I like the cast, you know, and, and it's just, it, it's, uh, I, I like the energy, you know, it's, uh, Soderbergh to me is, is has that, that um, quirk to him, much like Guy Ritchie yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, on the British level, uh, not quite as, as um, probably uh, more s- successful too, I think. I would all. say so on a larger scale. I mean, uh, you know, and he's not quite, and I mean this uh, as a compliment, he and Rich, Richie is very slapdash. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, it's very uh, uniquely cut. Uh, and of course it has the British, you know, dry British humor. Whereas Soderbergh, it, you know, it's, it, it, it's this lilting sort of tongue in cheek, uh, effort, um, you know, and of course he's making uh, uh, huge efforts as it regards changing the method of production uh, and raising money. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it's um, uh, but Ocean's Eleven and the cast and everybody else, uh, uh, those are my favorites for sure. Plus, you get to see, with the exception of, um, with the exception of the the made up casinos, which m- many of them are. Um, like the Tangiers. You yeah, know? yeah, right. right. <laughs> it is not here, folks. Yeah. Um, uh, and even the one it was based on, right, is yes. gone. The Stardust. Stardust gone. is gone. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, you know, it's it's very unique, and uh, I think it's a celebration of Las Vegas. Uh, yeah. The, you know, the cast involved in Soderbergh's films, especially with the Ocean's Eleven uh, uh, franchise, um, uh, they're they're having fun, which oftentimes, you know, when I'm watching a Las Vegas film, um, it is written. To be fun, like yeah. Hangover. Yeah, I don't. I don't perceive them as having fun. I'm an easy moviegoer. Now, someone made the comment that I'm an easy moviegoer for the movies that I see, which 
essentially is correct, but I see a lot of films. And uh, honestly, it takes a lot for me to say a film is terrible. Um, yeah, you know, there, there's some redeeming quality, plus the effort of the artists involved it's beyond what I'm doing right now. You know, I'm doing yeah. this little weenie production here, um, and uh, it's a massive undertaking. Um, you know, and it's um, uh, so I, I never find it to be a bad film. Is Hangover, you know, a blockbuster? Well, financially, I'm sure it is, uh, as far as it, it goes as a franchise. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, they're they're it's okay. Yeah, but also in in this film, I, I think in those oceans. Uh, series the films you know las vegas is one of the characters yes. because it could only ha- i wouldn't say it can only happen here but but there are very few places where it could happen where you have the casino where they can steal from and you have the massive hotels yes. and and everything set up like this yeah. it is it is pretty unique in, in that regards right. you know i mean when i travel somewhere and i you know for business go to a hotel and I ask how many rooms in this in this place oh well we've got you know 206 or whatever. And I kind of laugh. We had that on one floor, yeah, man, one where floor, I work. One, yeah. one wing of one floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, we're pretty big or we're packed. What do you mean you're packed? Yeah. The most you're going to have here is four or 500 people. It's Christ, we had that when it, getting on the elevator. <laughs> I, you know, and, and that's the thing about Las Vegas is, is I love to talk to, with as rarely as I love to talk to people, with uh, present company excluded, um, I, I, I love to talk to people who have that fresh-faced, view of Las Vegas. They don't have that ingrained view. Like they, they're, they're, they either don't like it, and for some reason are here again, or they're experts after three visits, and yeah. that one gets me. But I love the people that are fresh-faced, and, and they just can't believe it when they get here. You know, the facades are beautiful. Yeah. I have had the, the oh gosh, the, the, the I'm so lucky to have traveled to most of the locations that that are that are have facades here yeah uh you know and working at the venetian i was recently at my, at st mark square they did a wonderful job yeah uh you know there there's far less pickpocketing <laughs> and uh it's no pigeon shit to deal with no pigeons or pigeon shit uh and uh it's it's a lovely place to go so i mean uh, is it fake yes is it a facade yes is it is it shallow and meaningless yes but you know what when you first walk in for the first time it is a wonderful thing to see just like st mark square the original is yeah uh so i love to hear people like that and like you said when they're they're oh my gosh we went to a holiday inn who had 300 rooms and it's like well there's 300 right there you know, and it's just—it yeah. it was amazing what we dealt with at the Venetian, and during our tenure there, it was—it was, it was uh, you know, I believe second only to uh, uh, MGM uh, as far as the the total number of rooms and room yeah. size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, back to the movies, uh, uh, only because we had such a controversy with with uh, Wonder Woman. Um, I was proud, proud, proud of the Oscar voting. Um, people are are incensed. They, they, they cannot believe that Wonder Woman was completely snubbed. Now, if you look at it uh, as, as one should, um, and, I, and I'm sorry for the technical people, the people that worked so hard in making a good film, uh, but the thing is, it, it, you have to take it as a whole. They said, well, th- she should have gotten a, a, a nomination just because she was a woman director and, and she was brave to do it. No, no. You know, Nora Ephron was brave. You know, and, and, but but the thing is, it, it it didn't receive them because it wasn't supposed to. Was it a good film? Yes. Was it technically a, a, a beautiful film? Yes. But it it wasn't nominated because it didn't qualify against what it was uh, supposed to be. And so I'm really glad that the Oscars and the Oscar voters did not place it in there because of the current atmosphere of the Me Too movement and the women's movement and everything else. Fine. Great movements and that's and everything else, but it has nothing to do with quality. Well, it would, it would cheapen it, too, because yes. it would always hang over, even if it was of the of the same caliber. Exactly. Of those. I mean, I was happy to see a movie like Get Out, yes. get the, get the uh, uh, accolades that it did yeah, yeah absolutely and because absolutely. it is it is it is a really good film yeah um and it, it gets it gets it 
you know, you're going to put put it in a bucket. They call it a horror film. Not really. Yeah. I mean, it is horror on on a psychological level. Mm-hmm. I think, mm-hmm. and and I understand that feeling. I know yes. you when you go into a place and people are being, you know, overly nice to you and going out of their way to tell you like, well, you know, we we you fit in with us just fine. Right. On the surface, and yet you realize I don't belong here. Yes. You know, like I said, I lived in Japan all those years, and particularly when I lived out in the country, people were, treated me like that. Yeah. And I thought, I said, I know they don't like me being here, yeah. but they're being nice to me. Yeah, and see, and see that's another thing. And, and you, you have seen it firsthand. Uh, when you spend, when you are a Caucasian American male yeah. and spend that n- many years in some place, you learn firsthand that, that, that racism and, and uh, things of that nature are not strictly American. Oh no, not at all. You know, not yeah, at all. Yeah, it was it's funny. Human, is know. that I, you know, I would, I would hear have Japanese tell me, he said, "Oh, what's we can't imagine what it's like to be, be, you know, live in a racist country because yeah. we're all Japanese." Well, not all of the, those of us that weren't, uh, you know, Japanese, and then there were those who were Korean, of Korean descent, born in Japan, yes. had no, had never been to Korea any more than you know, I've been to Ireland. Uh, I have, you know, Irish ancestors. I have German ancestors. Right. Uh, I have French ancestors. I haven't been to any of those home pla- those countries, unfortunately, at, at this point. Right. Um, and I'd like to go, but but you know, in, in, in they have they have Koreans who were born in Japan. They speak Japanese. They have Japanese names. Yes. But they have to have a alien registration card, just like I did. Yes. And when Japanese then find out somebody's Korean, their their attitudes change towards them. Absolutely. So they are definitely basing it on. On, on race. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I, I can think of at least three instances where I was refused service because I was not Japanese. Yeah. And when I tell that to, to Japanese people that I knew, they would say, well, w- were you drunk? I said, no, I was trying to get drunk. I mean, maybe I'd gone to a bar. I just got off work, so I didn't yeah. have a chance. But they weren't and, surprised, were they? Well, oh, they, they tried to say, well, they kept they t- trying to write, well, maybe they didn't understand what you were saying. Mm-hmm. No, no, they didn't speak English or something. No, no, I understood quite well yeah. that they didn't want me in there because i do understand <laughs> right. when they tell me even in english japanese only i understand that yeah. and that's fine i'll leave but don't tell me you're not racist because i was just barred from that oh, no. and you know because of because of the fact that i was not japanese yeah. you know so you know ethnocentrism is is again it's not a, an american thing it's a human thing uh, so, so I'm, you know, I'm glad to hear a story like that. Yeah, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm sad you had to go through that, but yeah. I mean, you know. So I do have that, the, the feelings of that, and I also sure. have the feelings of what it's like to be harassed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, walking down when I lived out in the country, wasn't it? Didn't really happen when I lived when I moved to Tokyo, but for the first two years I was there, I lived out in the countryside, mm-hmm. walking down the street. I mean, we, I mean, to us, it's, we think of. I mean, I lived in a city that was half a million people, sure. but uh, it was kind of like to make an analogy to another to a city here in the U.S. Maybe like. Like, like Akron, Ohio. Okay. So it's it's big enough. I mean, you've heard of it. It's it's a blue collar type yeah. of town. Yeah, yeah. It's got, but it's still not. It's not L.A. It's not New York. It's not Chicago. Right. It's it's kind of midwesterny. Mm-hmm. You know, blue collar town. And I would say that we probably had there were a hundred registered foreigners out of the half a million, of which I think something like seventy five of them were Koreans. Mm-hmm. So they would not be recognized with, of, of of real. Caucasians, African Americans, or 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 black people, or whatever, right. who were non-Asian, there right. were probably fifteen or twenty of us. Yeah. So we were a sight. And walking down the street, <laughs> cars would slow down yes. and roll down the windows sometime and go haro haro. You know that gets really annoying really fast. And mm-hmm. it was worse if you were a woman. How much? Because they assumed all foreign women were prostitutes, wow. you know, and, you know, we were, they were teaching English. So it got, and going into a bar, it's the same thing. They all got to come up mm. and say, hello, uh, this is a pencil. Yeah, this is my finger. Fuck you, <laughs> you know. After a while, you get really tired of being bothered all the time. So if somebody said women getting harassed with wolf whistles. And cat calls. I understand that. Believe yes. me, I can understand how it must. Oh, Jesus Christ! I get really pissed off. You're just mad they didn't ask you how much, huh, John? That's right. Yeah. I would have told them how much. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I wanted to mention we had mentioned earlier uh, in an earlier um, uh, episode uh, about the, the wild horses, the Mustangs yes. here in, in Nevada, yes. and what a, what a great movement that is. Uh, I was able to find a movie, very uh, slim pickings right now as far as uh, production announcements in Nevada, Las Vegas specifically. 
Uh, but uh, there is a movie coming out with Susan Sarandon, oh, who great. her activism sort of uh, overshadows her acting, in my opinion. And, and I'm really not a Tim Robbins fan, but he's got Shawshank in his belt. So, um, uh, but it's called Mustang, and it's an interesting uh, theme on the Mustangs as it regards Nevada's. Um, uh, care of them uh, it is the theme of the movie is uh, they are are convicted convicts they are felons who have earned um, uh, by their actions within the prison the right to care for and deal with these wild mustangs uh, and that's uh, uh, has a release date in 2018 but it's mm-hmm. called Mustang Susan Sarandon uh, uh, I just thought that was interesting I, considering we spoke about that earlier yeah yeah, yeah. I, I and she does a, I mean another Tim Robbins film that well he didn't act in it was you know dead man walking yes yes uh, that was a that was a really powerful absolutely film. yeah absolutely yeah. but uh, John Rolling Stone says pot is here to stay what do you think yeah I think so we th- I thought so? that back in the 70s so. you know I, 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 Mr. Sessions aside, which which is you know coming up in my notes, but um, uh, uh, Rolling Stone's article you know went on and on about how it's here to stay, and uh, that um, the wheels are greased, and and Colorado is an example of a positive effort, and so on and so forth. Nevada uh, and Las Vegas being uh, what what Rolling Stone says is going to be a a, a pivot point for the progression of marijuana through the United States, uh, including. Uh, uh, the first lounges, mm. the first specific pot lounges, and let's see my notes here. Uh, there, <laughs> there's one called, uh, uh, it, it is a vape lounge that is going to be, have marijuana, uh, and, it's ca- and it's also an arcade. Because I've, I've been to movies and laundry and arcades and bars. I, uh, there was a Westwood uh, uh, arcade that I went to when I was going to college. Uh, but this is called v- um, uh, Vape and Play. And that, that apparently is going to uh, be the toe that sticks in the water of the first marijuana lounge uh, and uh, in Colorado, not mm-hmm. in Las Vegas, but okay. in Colorado. Um, however, uh, it, the, the, if you've been following the news, um, uh, Jeff Sessions and all the boys up there on the hill, uh, it's, it's, um, it, it is not going to fly federally. It is going to continue to be illegal. Um, and uh, so that means the states are including and the cities, including Las Vegas especially, are going to be flying in the face of federal law. Now, what do you, you know, I, I, I've made my opinion clear about marijuana uh, and uh, uh, I've yet to see the tax benefits, but we've yet to see the tax benefits. Um, uh, so, we, you know, we're, we're talking, I think, um, in Las Vegas, documented 19 million so far in revenue, 15% of which goes to taxation, um, and uh, 300 dispensaries. That that one knocked me over. I couldn't believe that already. Mm. Um, but um, what do you think now, as far as as marijuana in Las Vegas? I mean, what 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 do you? I haven't. You know, I, I maybe because you know I, I don't work any anymore in the industry, right. and right. and you know I. I uh, I'm kind of shut off from 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 some of that. I really haven't seen any negative effects. I mean, being yeah. a resident here, right. um, uh, and again, you know, with 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 uh, pot now legal in California, people don't have to come here for that. They might come here incidentally for that, or if they're coming from a state that doesn't allow it. Exactly. Um, so I don't know in in you know for for the guests that come here how how that affects things. But I know you know, and I've said this in the past. Given a choice between being around stoners or being around drunks, I'll take stoners yeah. because people, some people have the tendency to get, as we do know that from here, from, from being drunk, they, they have a tendency for, for some men mm-hmm. for violence. Well, not just men, but, That's but true. for That's violence. True. And I don't see that with, with, with the stoners that I know because yeah. they're, 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 they're just too mellowed out to, to muster much of a fight or get, get upset. Now, our latest news on, on the legal battle for it, which there hasn't been really a battle. It's just, it's just the bureaucracy that you know, getting all this stuff through. Marijuana is no different than any other regulation being passed. The Nevada Tax Commission passed a 268-page uh, 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 book, obviously, of regulations uh, that is going to go to our uh, t- uh, go to our house and 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 uh, and uh, and t- to be voted on, which is apparently going to be shot right through. Uh, uh, some some notable senators here in uh, uh, in Nevada uh, have uh, already said that they are pot smokers for one reason or another. I think they've all claimed medicinal, just not you know to not sure, be on that strange sure. fence, um, but. Um, 
the pro- you mentioned California and uh, Rolling Stone mentioned this as well as Forbes magazine mentioned this uh, uh, California has a huge problem now because they already had a, an infrastructure built around the medicinal uh, uh, right. stores yeah. that were approved now these are, are going to have to be reapproved and refile and re-regulated which means that they've uh, if it's a mom and pop they've already spent all their money trying to get this going uh, and it's not doing as well as people think I mean there are millions of dollars being you know spent on pot and we'll talk about that in a second but uh, uh, California is 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 uh, crying tears of policing hmm. because they not only are going to have the policing of the approved uh, uh, pot selling properties but they're going to have to deal with the policing of the of the ones that can't be re-regulated and cannot be reapproved and uh, all of the illegal pot places so they're just uh, you know ch- uh, changing one illegal pot place for another y- you go from just your everyday you know uh, college neighborhood dealer to a place that was approved for medicinal now no longer is but they're like you know up your ass I'm not I already did this and they're, they're going to continue business but they're yeah, going to shut no, down now, I don't know p- I know people you know grow their own and and i yes. don't think i haven't i haven't talked to them in a while but i don't think that that's going to change and they're, they're all of a sudden not going to pull up their pot plants and no. oh, i'm going to go down down the street and pay Th- those prices are they're exp- it's expensive hugely expensive and yes. one of the things you know I, I do i have a friend that lives in in colorado and you know he's got friends who who frequent the the dip- dispensaries they're into the edibles yes and, and everybody I, is apparently i didn't realize yeah that, right? and i mean he's into the, the, these mints that are i don't know four or five bucks a pop and, um, you know, I, I thought, I said, well, I, I know that they, ha- they have been able, you know, to, to extract the, you know, uh, uh, THG mm-hmm. and, and, um, and, you know, be able to market that where, where it's far more potent now mm-hmm. than it is than, it, than when it's grown naturally. And I've always said, whatever it is, with food, whatever, I'm opposed to processing things. Right. That you want to have it in the, in the natural state as much as possible. Which is why you know uh, prefer apple over an apple ju- over apple juice because you you've removed the fiber you've intensified the sugar rush right. you're going to get from it so it, it's just I think an apple's healthier than apple juice so I yeah. kind of think that, that that grass in its natural state is the way to go I think so you know um, and I remember you know b- way back in the seventies we were wondering we were thinking oh, it to be legal it'd be great you know to it. Because you can always be assured of getting the good stuff like you can with alcohol. Mm-hmm. We know that beer is only, you know, 3 6% alcohol, something like that, mm-hmm. depending on the on what you get. And, and whiskey is going to be 43% alcohol. It's going to mm-hmm. be 86 proof. Uh, and, it, and it's controlled and regulated. And w- w- when, you know, back in the 70s, it was like, okay, well, we don't know how good this shit is. It could be, it could be really good. It could be, you know, we had, we had Maui Wowie. Uh, uh, Alcapulco Gold, those are some of them. Or it could be skunkweed. Well, yeah, and I mean, there's the whole argument, uh, you know, pardon me, all the pot smokers for, you know, if I get these wrong, but the, uh, I believe it's Invictus and Sativa. Uh, those are the two, uh, and they say they're talking about the, the, the broad leaf against the, the narrow leaf and so on and so forth. And uh, one creates this high, one creates this high, one is more of this, one is more of that. And uh, uh, based on all the information that I've read, there is no data to support any of that. It's just nonsense. I mean, the people love to say that, but there's no data regarding that. So, so that I, I know notice that people are putting that in front of them, saying that you know, well, it's just going to be this, or it's just going to be that, and 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 we don't understand why the Fed the Feds are trying to you know regulate against it. I mean, the sativa is only this, and you know. That, that, that and that never was my point. But see, my point was a long time ago was set aside. I mean, I, I I've lost the war. But the one thing that I've learned, and I and I called I, many of my friends uh, uh, in, in the entertainment industry uh, and uh, band members. You know, uh, there's no, nothing uh, pot smokers and drummers. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, band members, stage uh, hands, and I called several of my friends who who I know um, uh, purchase. Uh, marijuana here in Las Vegas and they have stopped going to dispensaries Mm. for the very plain fact it is ungodly expensive and what people don't realize is that when the dispensaries opened these 300 some odd dispensaries opened for the, uh, the, the, the first time they had special pricing 
you know, $55 per gummy whatever was a special price. It's going up. Mm. It's now 65 wow. in some places. Wow. 65 for one gummy, one high. Actually, I believe it's two. Uh, but a little little tiny gumdrop. Yeah. And $65 to get high, I don't know, what, twice maybe? Or once if you're a, you know, a freak? <laughs> you know? I, it, the, people are going back to their old method. Yeah, yeah. They're going back to their, 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 their weed guy. Yeah. And I just wonder how that's going to happen. You know, and nobody's mentioning organized crime involvement uh, because I think they're waiting. I think they're like vultures in the sky. I think they're waiting for everything to settle down. And then, you know, because the, the marijuana industry is owned by the billionaires already. You know, they're brilliant men and they're billionaires for a reason. And they saw the money. They don't care what it is. And they're going to ride the marijuana pony until they, they then he you know dies in the dust. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm just I don't know if Las Vegas is going to be a positive or negative thing. Uh, but uh, uh, I'll be, you know, the, the I, I find it interesting. The feds are fighting a tooth and nail. Yeah, and that's what, bo- what bothers me about that. It, it just shows how authoritarian and anti-democratic that whole administration really yes. is. They yes. don't give a shit what people think. People have already voted this. This is the right. way it is. And, you know, so, so, but, oh, no, 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 we're going to oppose it. Yeah. Unless it's something that, that th- they are in favor of or a particular state is. Mm-hmm. If you get some really hardcore right-wing state and then they're going to say, oh, well, hey, we want to leave this all up to the states to decide. Right. You know, so right. they, 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 you know, they play both hands against the yeah. middle. Like now, that. you and I Bastards. spoke about... <laughs> Bastards. Uh, you and I spoke about something uh, off camera last week yeah. and regarding marijuana, and it's, it has nothing to do with all the, the, the social nature of it. Yeah. It, that, actually, no, that's not true. What I mean, social networking nature and all the marketing and so on and so forth, we talked about the fact that um, many of the proponents of it that are not specifically a proponent of it uh, professionally, like a marketer or a politician, uh, uh, just an everyday person that's a marijuana smoker, suddenly when they're put on the spot and given a forum like you are sitting here on on the show, um, they clam up. And they become embarrassed. And, oh, my God, I, you know, I can't talk about marijuana because I'll get fired. And, and I just, what, that's something I don't understand. And, and, uh, you know, your generation, I think, I don't know, what, what do you hear, do you, you talk to people of your generation and, and they're, 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 you know, card carrying, sign carrying members of the marijuana movement. And, and when they're put on the spot, do they stop talking? No, I don't think so. People, of course, people I know, there's, there's a younger generation that, 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 that had the, 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 uh, license in the early days there, right? right? They had the license for, for medicinal purposes. People that I knew were always on the fringe. Yeah. So they grew their own in the backyard, whatever, or they had, you know, again, you're talking about people who, they're not going to change their habits. So they're going to c- continue to do it. I mean, and when we thought about the legalization of it, again, it was just like you can be, be in possession of mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. You can grow it your own. You can do whatever the hell you want. You can grow it like you grow tomatoes. Right. You know, um, the idea of, uh, of the dispensary is fine. Um, but yeah, if they're, if they're going to be too expensive, then people are going to go back to their old, their old ways of doing it because otherwise it's, it's too much. Now for the occasional user, Mm -hmm. I think, or somebody says, Hey, I don't know anybody in town where we worked at the Venetian, these dispensaries would have been great because the idea that, you know, we weren't asked very often, Mm -hmm. but I'm sure that that those requests have gone up now because the fact it is legal and people want to know where they can buy it and they can't buy it on the strip. Yeah. And you have to know that you're gonna have to go off the strip, and, you know, it, it, to get it. And and uh, um, of course, there's no smoking in your room. I mean, even of cigarettes uh, yeah. in, in most uh, of the hotels. Yeah. Um, so you maybe there's there's edibles, whatever. Um, and you can't stop that. That's true. That's you know, true. but but we yeah you know, we were asked now and then. But, but th- that, that would have made that aspect of the job a lot easier. Yeah. If well, if there's anything that I agree with uh, 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 the, the Rolling Stone and Forbes, Rolling Stone specifically, about their article, you know, they, they um, this is my term, but Las Vegas is going to be a harbinger of what is to come uh, as it regards the marijuana issue, without question. I mean, we're, the, the, we're going to be the stand. Colorado may have been the first to fall on the sword and, and, and make the bridge, uh, but I think we're going to be carrying the flag across, uh, good or bad, I, I don't know. I 
want to see some of those tax dollars. And yet when I say that, my, the tax dollars aren't coming to me. I don't have kids. I'm not going to have kids. Um, and they're going to the little kids. And, and uh, you know, maybe they'll benefit your boy. I don't know. But um, uh, 15% of 19 million is not bad. Um, and uh, if we don't have a, you know, a bunch of zombies rolling down the street, you know, uh, eating gummy bears, I, I think I'll, I'll be okay with it. Um, but, uh, uh, well, thanks, John. I appreciate the... Uh, I, I look to John for for you know to stabilize me. You know, I, I, I John John is uh, has ten years on me and he's seen more life. So uh, uh, luckily he's he, he'll land my balloon if I'm going. And I've to been stoned more times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> by a large percentage. Uh, uh, next week, uh, we're, uh, John, one of the topics we're going to talk about, CinemaCon. Okay. Um, a big uh, convention here in town. Uh, uh, everything and everything that is movies. Uh, huge, apparently, a huge Avatar uh, announcement is coming. Uh, 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 some of which uh, is going to involve Las Vegas as far as the production. Mm. Uh, very excited about that. Um, apparently, uh, Cameron's shooting... Um, th- I think three at this point in a row. Wow. He's just going to shoot the shit out of Avatar and then be done with it, I think. Uh, but uh, we'll talk about that. More Las Vegas stories and um, coming up on one year. So uh, uh, this is episode 47. Uh, episode 48 is next week. And then episode 49 is, is, the one is year? a one year anniversary. So we're going to hopefully have some uh, uh, surprise guests. Uh, but John and I will be... We'll stop off at the dispensary. And yes. Then, yeah, we'll do that to celebrate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and have a milkshake. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. But John and I will be here, and uh, we uh, thank, thank all of you for your uh, listenership. If you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, but we'll see you all next week. Thanks to everyone listening and watching. You can catch the Pod Bay Door on the Podbean app or any of your favorite podcast apps, including iTunes, Google Play, Tune in and Stitcher Radio. You can watch the show on our YouTube channel at the Pod Bay Door Podcast. Please download, like, and subscribe. Our social connectivity screen is coming up. Check in with us on Facebook, Twitter, and WordPress. The Pod Bay Door is closed and talent is out. Hey everybody, thank you very much for tuning into the show. We would love to hear your show suggestions and comments. If you are watching on our YouTube channel, please click to subscribe. You can also connect with us on Facebook using at PBD Podcast, on Twitter using at TPBD Podcast, and on WordPress at thepodbaydoor.wordpress.com.